Hey there, uh, I've been away for a long time, so I figure I'll uh, not let you wait any longer and just get on with the lesson. So a really common question is, how do I hold the pick? Is there a right way of holding the pick? Why are some ways better than others and so on? So uh, most of you, I'm sure, will not be really interested in why or anything, and I'll just show you now what I believe is the best way to hold the pick. Now, everyone's hands are slightly different. So first thing is you want to be relaxed. So take your hand and relax it totally and just move it around and see your fingers are open if you relax it like that and as you turn it they tend to close. So you hold it against your guitar the way you normally play guitar, don't hunt up your shoulder like I just did. So what you want to do now is keep your hand totally relaxed. Take your pick, trusty jazz three. And you want to put it between the side of your index finger and the pad of your thumb. So I rotate it a little bit so it's sticking straight into the strings, but my hand position is almost exactly the same as a totally relaxed hand. So that's it, as if it was holding a pick. And shake it out a bit. That's it, totally relaxed in that same position. So that's what I believe is the best way to hold a pick. So some people maybe have got much bigger hands than me, and if your hand is close enough to the guitar, you might even have to let your fingers touch against the uh, guitar itself. Uh, you might use a bigger pick than me, and so on and so on, but if you try that method, I'm sure you'll find it's very easy to find a good place to keep your uh, picking hand, a good way to keep your pick. Okay, so you relax your hand, bring it close to your normal playing position, and you put your pick in between the side of your index finger and the pad of your thumb. So, that's mine there. Okay, I'll go into some reasoning now for those who are a little bit more curious. So, um, there's no question that a lot of guitarists have been very successful with very weird ways of holding the pick. Uh, Michelangelo Batio, you know, with his... and Sean Lane with his backwards thumb technique and, you know, Marty Friedman with his broken chicken leg super reverse attack and... that's all cool and some of them get away with it because they practiced very hard and some of it some of them get away with it as such because they're just extremely flexible uh, so for example I used to try and pick like Sean Lane all the time because you know he's amazing at picking so I used to go okay I'm gonna bend my thumb backwards I'm gonna use the pad of my index finger not the side I'm gonna try and pick the strings but for me to get that posture I have to put my hand into a lot of tension so it's no good to me and the moment I realized that was important. The uh, Probably the best all-round position, I think, is, is just the one I demonstrate, which is basically the same as Paul Gilbert. And it's sort of the same as Sean Lane, except Sean Lane used very, very much the point of a pick. So, the reasons I think that's good is, first of all, it's in perfectly in the middle of the natural range of motion of the wrist. So if you take your hand and you flap it around as such. You can see the tendons that hold your hand in place, they aren't taut as such. There's actually some slack. They have some give. You can move your hand around quite a bit without it being tense, but if you move it just a little bit out of the side of that range, it gets very tense very quickly. So that's why I really wouldn't recommend copying this kind of backwards approach or anything extreme at all until you've tried at least a more normal way of doing things. Um, and the other thing is, if your hand's exactly in the middle of your free range of motion, you get as much flexibility out of it as possible. Now, um, the other thing is that I like to be able to channel the weight of my arm correctly. So if I'm, say I was to hold the pick with two fingers, and this is very common, it's kind of the pads of two fingers, the pad of the thumb, what you find is you want to pick out the strings an awful lot and you won't, this may not be a big concern for all of you, you won't be able to use your, all of your fingers effectively. Uh, some people also hold the pick with three fingers, I've seen that. Uh, uh, the other thing is holding it with say the pad of your middle finger and then leaving your index finger out. I don't think that's a good idea for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, you won't be able to use all your fingers, which I like to do 
it's handy having them there. I use all the fingers of my left hand. I want to use all digits of my right hand effectively. Uh, they're there. I can use them to make my life easier. Let's do it. Um, the other thing is, it doesn't really allow you as good an angle at, at uh, channeling the weight of your arm across. You always want tend to point down slightly more than you would if you're holding it with your index. Uh, it's not such a big deal, but as well, if you're a beginner, your index finger will naturally be stronger. Um, the other thing is that what with the uh, index finger being in the way, you're probably going to have to move it and stick it out, and that's not really particularly good either. The other nice thing, of course, about holding it in a normal way is that uh, you can take advantage of normal things like muting. Um, that's, that's one thing actually about Sean's technique is he has this really, really backwards thumb that points directly into the strings, but because of that and the fact that he's using the pad of the finger rather than the side, he can't really close his hand up as much. And you watch if you watch some things, he actually changes his hand position to be able to do this, but you can't really mute that well if you're using the tip the pad of your index finger and your thumb. Okay, so I think we've got perhaps a little bit too much into depth and that should uh, see us back to uh, hopefully more regular lessons from me. Okay, hope it was good.